Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lara and today's video is going to be a get ready with me using my new products. These aren't like brand new. I actually kind of hauled them in a recent video where I was talking about all the products that I have acquired during my no buy, but I haven't used yet. And I thought it'd be fun to try some of them out. So this is not a full face of new makeup, but a bunch of the products are brand new. I actually really like how this look came together, although I wasn't sure off the bat. And I'm going to be answering questions asked by all of you about my feelings towards no buy and makeup and that kind of thing. So let's just get into it. I will have a naked face right now. Hello, here we are. I have a fully naked face. All I have on right now is moisturizer and sunscreen. My sunscreen does leave a white cast, so if I look paler than usual, that is why. I'm just gonna go off camera, do my eyebrows and eyelid primer. This is what I use. I don't even know what this is, and MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I feel like this is not exciting to watch on camera, but I did want to come here first with a fully naked face, otherwise it would be a bit disingenuous, but I will be right back. So as promised, I am going to be answering questions in this Get Ready With Me. I am wearing a shirt, rest assured. I posted on YouTube asking if anyone had questions pertaining to my low buy, transition to no buy, general thoughts on makeup, that kind of thing. And actually there were a bunch of questions. I was really happy because I was sort of worried that like two people would ask, but nine people commented with questions and a lot of those people actually had like four different questions. So I don't even know if I'm gonna get through everything on account of my videos are generally like around the 15 minute mark, but we're gonna try. I also don't know how it'll work with like talking and putting on makeup, but here we go. So I'm gonna start out with my Classic Naked Heat. This has been in my stash for a little while now and I have been really enjoying it. The first question is from Surya. I'm curious how you feel about drugstore versus high-end makeup after your no buy, whether you miss having a project, what you think will be your next project, if anything, have your makeup tastes changed and whether you're going to set limits or goals for spending or minimalism goals in the future. Okay, that is a lot. I'm just using some of the palest shades for a bit of a crease color here. Okay, drugstore versus high-end. So yes, definitely my thoughts on that have changed because I used to buy primarily drugstore and going forward, I think I'm going to focus more on high end because my tastes have changed. Before I used to be okay with a $4, three or $4 product and now I just like have, I don't know, higher expectations or something. That is part of it, but also there is the part where I want to enjoy my makeup more and I want to think about my products longer before I purchase them. And I don't think I'm going to do that if I keep buying really cheap makeup. I'm just gonna buy whatever's on sale, whatever's available. Whereas if I actually have to put more money into it, I'm going to think about it longer and I'm likely not going to do as much impulse purchasing and I'm not going to wind up with products that I don't like because I will have spent longer thinking about if I should buy them in the first place. Hopefully that makes sense. Next, this is a new product. This is the Tarte Metallic shadow in the color Speak Easy. Never tried this before and this is a color that looks like it will be right up my alley. I did show this in a recent video where I talked about all of my new makeup. So that's it there. I think I'll put this in the outer half. So I'm just gonna use this brush I've had forever. In terms of if I miss having a project, I assume this individual is referring to like a makeup no buy kind of project. Ooh, that's very metallic. That actually kind of reminds me of the last color in this Naked Heat palette. Oh damn, those are really similar. Can you see? I'll have to do a close up later, but they're really similar, which I'm kind of bummed about because you know, that shows that I already have a similar color. Yes, do I miss having a project? I still feel like I have a project. It's not like I went from no buy to buying whatever I want. Like I'm still, my relationship to makeup has changed and I am still very intentional about my makeup purchases. Well, I haven't even <laughs> made any makeup purchases yet. No, I, I don't miss having a project in that sense. And I still have a project pan. So <laughs> like that's some kind of project. How have my makeup tastes changed? Oh man, so much. I don't even know where to begin with this one. It's a bit darker than I wanted. I was kind of going for like a brighter look. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with that. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that to be quite so smoky right off the bat, but I just took some neutral shades and sort of blended it out. Hopefully I can clean that up with a bit of concealer. And speaking of which, let's move on to foundation. So today I'm just gonna use the CoverGirl Clean Fresh foundation. You will see how this is not a perfect shade match for me. So I usually do add in some of my darker Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. Man, it's hard to talk about what I'm using and also answer questions at the same time. This is a challenge. Okay, so how my makeup tastes have changed. 
well I don't like quite so high coverage and matte foundation anymore I think that is the main thing like the overall look of skin my preferences have changed and the kind of eye makeup looks I do have changed but I feel like I could do a whole video about that so I don't even know how far to go in about that like I don't want to spend all this time talking about how my makeup tastes have changed but I will say as I've learned more about myself in terms of my makeup taste and like what looks good on me and I have only learned that because I've spent more time putting makeup on in the past two years as a result of my making my vibe I've learned what's looked good on me so that is the main thing that's changed my makeup tastes have changed because I now know what to put on my face basically and and how to do makeup definitely my technique has improved though you would not be able to tell by the haphazard way that I am putting this foundation on right now this is why people don't do get ready with me's I did also have this green eyeliner here just in case I wanted to use it, but something tells me it's not gonna go with this look. So yeah, the question is saying, did the feeling of I don't need that get progressively easier? I think I just got used to it. It's not that it got easier. Like I just, I came around to the idea that I, I didn't actually need more makeup, which was a foreign concept to me before the no buy. It was just like, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't need more makeup, but like I need it. Like I want more makeup and I didn't actually realize that I shouldn't get anymore so that part was never a problem okay now I'm going to be using this Hamptons weekender set from Tarte I think I'm going to try to use all three shades so there is a oh there's a little plastic sheet there is a blush bronzer and highlight so let's use some of that bronzer first. It doesn't look like it's shimmery, which is a good thing. Next question. Are you keeping track of dates when you purchase and open an item or keeping any list of sheets of your makeup in general? Oh, a lot just came off on my brush. Do you see that? Okay. Uh, I was not expecting that. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so dark. Holy. Okay, bad call. Um, okay. Am I keeping a list of when I ma open makeup? No. No, I honestly could not be bothered. <laughs> that is just not something that I would ever do. Too much work. In terms of any kind of like keeping track of the makeup I have, yes, I do have this kind of like Excel spreadsheet of all the makeup I own, but I don't update it very often. The last time I did was maybe like two months ago and I felt really good about it when I did it at the time, but I think that only works if I'm willing to do it regularly and I'm just, I'm just not. I'm just, it's, in the future, I would ideally like to, but I don't. And honestly, this is just laziness. Like I just know it would be a lot of work and so I'm not willing to do it, but I think everyone should. So I'll give that caveat. Are you doing a product specific no buy or are you giving yourself the freedom to purchase from any category? I'm not doing a product specific no buy, like a strict one, but I kind of know generally which products which areas I shouldn't get and the ones I should get the ones I should get are foundation and concealer this is kind of weird it like is going on on a blotch and it's kind of difficult to to blend out it smells like chocolate I hope it's supposed to <laughs> I never do my makeup in natural light so this is different I also feel like all of my get ready with me's have like extremely chaotic energy so yeah I just generally know which categories I should avoid and which ones I need to buy stuff in but i i haven't written that down in any capacity or anything like that i think i would be more nervous if i was like really really eager to get out there and just buy everything but because i know it's a low buy and i don't feel out of control i still feel like i'm very constrained because my whole relationship with makeup has changed i'm not really worried like i'm not putting strict restraints on myself because i know that if i don't have them i won't follow them i'm just Feeling a bit more free. Okay, since you're transitioning to a low buy, will you have some sort of budget allocated for beauty stuff? This highlight is beautiful. I'm just using this brush from BH Cosmetics. It's so pretty. No, I'm actually not planning to implement any kind of budget just because I... <laughs> that looks kind of strange. I think I'm gonna have to use my blush brush to buff it out a bit. At this point, I'm again as i said i'm not really worried about going overboard so i'm not going to do that but if in the future at any point i feel like i need to set restrictions on myself then i will but luckily i don't feel that way currently maybe i should have used my finger to apply this for the first time 
Oh wow, oh damn, this is really shimmery. Next question, I'm curious on your thoughts on travel slash mini size products and project panning. I've seen a lot of declutters where the person keeps a full size product they're unsure about and gets rid of the travel size or mini version. Yeah, I, I agree with this person. I would always go for the mini size. Like there's so many products that I wish I could just have in mini size so that I could try out a ton of different things because now I know how long it actually takes to get through makeup. So realistically, I know that I should have fewer things. Like I should have, let's say four blushes because I know that it'll take four years to get through those blushes, but I would rather have 10 blushes so that I have more variety. And if that means that they will all have to be mini just so that I can realistically get through them, then that's fine. I, I love the idea of minis. I don't know why this isn't a bigger thing in the beauty community, but hopefully it will be. Okay, I'm gonna do a mascara now. I haven't decided if I should put on some more, like a black eyeliner. By the way, this is the CoverGirl So Lashy. I don't think I used to reach for this very much, but now it's one of my favorites, I think because the brush is extremely separating and that's kind of what I look for in a mascara and it really, really builds up. So the next question is, what product were you the most sad to use up during your no buy? Oh, actually, this is a skincare product. Does, does that count? So I just finished this week this Pacifica makeup remover kind of product and I loved it. This is something that I got fairly recently. So obviously it's not like an old product I've had forever. And when I purchased it, my tastes were different. This is something I acquired recently and I love Pacifica. I really like the smell of this product, everything. So I've been like kind of rationing out my use of it the past couple weeks because I knew it was running to the end. And then this week I saw it on sale at Shoppers. So I was like, you know what? Just go buy it again. <laughs> Just go buy it again. It's not a backup because I'm gonna finish it within the next couple days. Just buy it. I haven't had that experience with any, that's a lie. I had that experience with the Tarte blush in Party. I really, really liked the Tarte products that I had tried. And so I did this big Tarte order and I ended up purchasing that same blush in a slightly different color, but I realized I wanted the original color of that blush. So I actually got it on buns fairly recently because I felt like I couldn't live without it. Okay, I just went to get it. This is it, isn't it? Beautiful, I just love all of the Pacifica packaging. I was actually trying to obtain something like this from Buns, like a micellar water from Garnier or what is that other brand? And there's there's a ton out there, like there's a ton of unopened ones, but I haven't been able to meet up with the person yet to obtain it. So I was like, you know what? Time being, just go get it. Okay, I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of the Kat Von D tattoo liner and I will grab, this is the Tarte blush in Party. I love it. Like, honestly, that <laughs> birthday campaign that Tarte did that year, that got so many people hooked onto Tarte. I heard so many YouTubers talking about that blush. Just a tiny bit to darken and thicken up the outer corner. Next question. How much money do you think you save through your no-buy? I think I'm gonna get to all these questions, actually. It's a really difficult question to answer because I was never tracking the amount of money that I was spending on makeup or skincare or anything. Oh man, I gotta do this off camera, I'm sorry. So this question, I have absolutely no idea. I'm gonna pick a random number out of a hat and say I saved $250 a year, but I really, I really don't know. And I, like this would be more if I factored in gift cards because I always used to ask for Sephora gift cards for birthdays and whatnot. And obviously I was not doing that while I was on a no buy. So that would be another, oh no, this is like spill. They just pulled out the Urban Decay All Nighter and I actually used this last weekend. So this happened since then. Ew, what the heck? That's gross. Yeah, so maybe factor in an extra hundred dollars a year for, you know, Sephora gift cards, but I really don't know. I saved a bunch of money, but I don't think that I was ever spending as much as like, you know, the big beauty gurus because, one moment. Mm. Mm, I don't like the way that feels or or smells looks okay because I was mostly buying drugstore I was mostly buying on sale I was mostly doing impulse purchases so I don't think I was ever spending like thousands of dollars a year on makeup which is a good thing but I somehow still ended up with this massive collection okay and then the last question this was this question is like 10 different questions was there a particular video with your channel that you felt resonated with a lot of people and grew your channel more than any other I have noticed that collabs have been really helpful. So I did a collab with a YouTuber, Sally, back in 
December. I got a big bump back then. That was really helpful. And then also Shauna, when Shauna shared my video, that was super helpful. So I'm gonna choose between one of these two bite lip products. I don't think either of these go with my look but that one's for sure. That one would probably go better, but I think that's just gonna look too dark for the function that I'm attending today. So I'm gonna go with Glacé, is that an accent aigu? And try that. Ooh, it's lighter than I expected. Yeah, and then Project Pants have been super, super helpful. I've just seen, like since I moved into this apartment, I feel like I've taken YouTube more seriously. That was back in October. I use a proper camera, I got lights, I have a better general background and whatnot, and I have a microphone, that's helpful. So I think that I just gradually seen progress. Okay, my camera shut off because it overheated, but I just did the lips and I adore this color. I'm so happy with it. It actually does kind of go with the eye look. I'm, yeah. I love it, I'm very happy. So this last question from Claire is very, there's like a bunch of different questions, but I think I'm just gonna say, is it possible to have a makeup collection where everything gets used and nothing is wasted? To an extent. So I think that you can have a makeup collection where you do get use out of every item. You're rotating through every single blush, you get a fair amount of use out of all of your eyeshadow palettes, but you can't, in the sense of nothing being wasted, you're not gonna be able to fully use up every single item unless you have a very, very, very curated minimal collection. So for myself, I make good use out of my collection. I'm trying to make it very curated, but I'm not gonna be able to use every makeup product up entirely. And that's why I'm trying to get better at decluttering products and giving them away. Just one last question. Do you think that people should be more open to secondhand makeup? I think that this, it's a bit complicated, but I think that this is more of an issue of awareness than anything else. People don't know that the secondhand makeup market exists. And the my first assumption would be like, oh, that's gross. But secondhand makeup can mean completely brand new products that have never been opened or touched or anything. And people aren't aware that that exists. So like buns and, and Facebook marketplace, like you can find brand new items on there. Like this, that nude sticks, that was a, that was from buns that still, it was still in the packaging. This Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, that was from buns still in the packaging. So people, yeah, I think people just aren't aware of it. And also buns isn't accessible everywhere. I think it's mostly in Canadian cities, but that is it. <laughs> so yes, those are all the questions I'm gonna be answering today. I've been talking for like half an hour. I really have to go. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, I should do some close-ups. Give this video a thumbs up. And now of course I'm going to mention the book that I'm currently reading. Okay, so this book I actually finished reading last week. It's called Unmarriageable by Sonia Kamal. It is Pride and Prejudice in Pakistan. And <laughs> I think this was my favorite book of the year so far. I absolutely loved it. I love the story of Pride and Prejudice. Like I've read the original in a bunch of different versions. I read Aisha at last. What are there? There's so many adaptations of, of Pride and Prejudice, but this was probably my favorite I've ever read. I struggled with Pride and Prejudice. I mean, I was very young when I read it, but also Jane Austen is just challenging. This is so much fun. I absolutely loved it. And I do want to be careful of like, exoticizing Pakistan and non-white cultures, but it was just, there's something so, so beautiful and rich about the culture and the food and the clothing in this book. It was, it was just so much fun. <laughs> it was one of those books that I absolutely could not put down. I haven't had a book like that at least in 2021. So I highly, highly recommend Unmarriageable. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.